Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks and praise for this day, this chance that we can gather together and worship you. O oh, Lord God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and be with us. Be present in our hearts and our minds and help us to worship you with all of our heart, mind, body, and strength. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our opening hymn is Christ has made the sure foundation. It's in your flyer. Let us sing. Christ is made the sure foundation. Christ the head and cornerstone. Chosen of the Lord and precious, binding all the church in one. Holy Zion's help forever and her confidence alone. This temple where we call thee, come, O Lord of hosts today. Wanted loving kindness, hear thy people as they pray, and thy fullest benediction shed within its walls away. Here, vouchsafe to all thy servants what they ask of thee to gain. They gain from thee forever with the blessed to retain. Hereafter in thy glory, evermore with thee to reign. Lord and honor to the Father, Lord and honor to the Son. To the Spirit, ever three and ever one, one in might and one in glory, ending ages run. Amen. Amen. That was good. All right, we're going to begin our message with a reading from Colossians chapter 3. This is one of my favorite passages in the New Testament. Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears then you also will appear with him in glory. Down to verse 12. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, 
kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Here ends the lesson. Now our gospel reading, <clears throat> excuse me, is from Matthew chapter 18. Beginning at verse 15. If your brother sins against you, said Jesus, go and show him his fault just between the two of you. If he listens to you, you have won your brother over. But if he will not listen, take one or two others along, so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen even to the church, treat him as you would a pagan or a tax collector. I tell you the truth, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything you ask for, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three come together in my name, there I am with them. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother when he sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. Here ends the gospel. Let us pray over the word. Almighty God, as we consider these passages today and what they mean for our lives, I ask that your Holy Spirit come among us and help us to have a good and full understanding of your word and your ways. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I want to begin with a story from my own life. When I was about 10 years old, my father walked out the door and did not return. He divorced my mother. I was very angry at him. I was very hurt. And I held on to that anger for a very long time. It turned into bitterness and resentment. Even as I went to seminary and graduated and was ordained, but then I went to a Corsillo weekend. I wasn't uh, one of the leaders, I was just going as a participant. And during the Eucharist, they spoke about forgiveness. And I knew I needed to forgive my father. And I did from my heart. And tears just flooded from my eyes because the bitterness and the resentment was gone. I was set free. And instead of that anger, it was replaced with love. So in today's gospel and today's epistle, I chose lessons about forgiveness. In Colossians 3, it says, Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. That's a reminder, is it not, that God has forgiven us for so many things if we have gone to Him and asked Him to. Because when we do, He forgives. That's His promise. If you seek forgiveness from God, if you repent, He forgives you. And that's a wonderful feeling and a wonderful knowledge that we have as Christians. But then Peter takes it kind of a step further when he asked that very interesting question in the gospel. He said, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother? Seven times? 
he was, I think, hoping to get out of something that may, might have been going on between he and Andrew. Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. Can you imagine Peter's face falling, knowing that he and Andrew would have to work it out? What does that tell us about forgiveness? It means regardless of how many times we are offended, we are called to forgive. Now, I know that forgiveness can be one of the hardest things to do as a Christian. I know that because of what happened with my father. It took me years to get to the point where I could forgive him for that hurt that he caused me. Years. That may be true for some of you in this room. Maybe you've experienced that kind of hurt or you've caused that kind of hurt. And so forgiveness is needed. It may be that you need to be the one that apologizes because you know you've caused a hurt or an offense. Or it may be that you need to receive forgiveness. Now sometimes it's not practical or it's, it's not even possible to go to the person and, and talk to them and try and work it out. Sometimes you can only do that with God. That's what I did when I was sitting in that chapel that day at that Curcio weekend. God and I worked it out. And I forgave my father. You see, I couldn't go to him for forgiveness because he had died. But God knew that he could do that work in my heart, and he did. Now, one more piece of scripture I want to share with you today that we didn't read is from 1 Corinthians 13, verses 4 and 5. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it is not rude, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. And that's the key part of this particular verse, it keeps no record of wrongs. But that's just what we do sometimes, isn't it? That's what I was doing with my father. I was holding that hurt against him, that wrong that he had done. I was holding on to it. But here Paul tells us, love calls us to let it go. And that's the power of forgiveness. When we are able to forgive that person, it begins the healing process in our hearts. It may be that you can only say in your mind, I forgive you. Maybe the feeling isn't there. That's okay. You make a decision to forgive, and that's the first step. The healing of the heart, the healing of the emotions, by saying, I forgive you, allows God to come in and begin that healing process and to begin to erase that record of wrongs that we're not supposed to keep. So I want to end with a prayer that maybe might help some of us to begin that process in our lives. So let us pray. Almighty God, you know our hearts today in this room, each one of us. You know those of us who need to apologize or those of us who need to forgive. And Lord God, you know that you alone can help us to do this. So I pray, Father, that you would pour out your Holy Spirit. And give us the strength and the courage to do what we need to do. To apologize or to forgive or both. And Lord, heal our hearts of the hurt. The woundedness, the anger, the bitterness, the resentment that we're holding on to. And replace it with your love. 
In your name we pray. Amen. We'll continue with the hymn, Sweet Hour of Prayer. It is on the back of your sheet. And you're going to have to help me with this one. I haven't sung this one in a long time, and I'm not quite sure of the tune. So help me out with this one. For those of you listening on the video and the live stream or the recording, uh, my name is Gary Blaylock. I'm the rector at St. Francis at the Point uh, in the very southern portion of Fairhope, Alabama. Point Clear is literally across the street. So that's where I am from. Let me continue with two prayers that I love from our prayer book, one for peace and one for grace. Let us pray. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the end of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that the rest of this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings being ordered by thy governance may be righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us continue with the prayer that our Lord Jesus Christ taught us and say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our closing hymn is Christ for the World We Sing. Again, it is on the back of your sheet. Christ for the world we sing. To Christ we bring with loving zeal the poor and them that mourn, the faint and overborn, in sick and sorrow worn, whom Christ doth heal. For 
the world we sing, the world to Christ we bring with fervent prayer. passions tossed, deemed at countless cost from dark despair. For the world we sing, the world to Christ we bring, with one accord, with us the work to share. Thus reproach to dare, thus the cross to bear for Christ our Lord. For the world we sing, the world to Christ we bring with joyful song, the newborn souls whose days claim from error's ways, inspired with hope and praise, Christ belong. Amen. I'm going to say a blessing and then they can do the postlude. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Y'all know the post Luke, sing along with Mary. It's very familiar.